afro haired Indian form for sake of himself. He did it because many sages and seers and since eternity, since millennia, had prayed to him and because of his their prayers, because of their asking him to take a form. He has taken a form. Now what I want to why I am giving this preamble is if we understood that principle that every name of God is a key or something that is related to transforming ourselves then we understand we should understand what is the name of what does the name of Sai mean how does the name of Sai help me become a better person what does the name Rama mean? How does this help me make me better person? What does the name Krishna mean? How does it make me be better person? What does Yehovah mean? How does it make me be better person? What does Ahura mean? How does it make me better person? This is the inquiry that we need to get on. And this inquiry is called Swadhyaya. Swadhyaya Pravatanecha. I talk based on my experience of studying these principles, not based on my bookish knowledge. Swadhyaya Pravatanecha. I am talking based on Swadhyaya. Dhi means intellect, Adhi means beyond the intellect. The one which is beyond intellect is called Adhyaya. Now you understand? How each word is so powerful that it is telling you a way of going beyond who we are, the body, mind and the intellect. What does the word Swadhyaya mean? Sir? Then what we are trying to understand is Swadhyaya doesn't mean taking a book and reading it taking that word and going beyond the intellect to understand what all of this means and how it enhances beyond our intellect. The context of Narayana, what does the word Narayana mean? How do I study this word Narayana? If Narayana simply means a blue guy sleeping on a snake coil with a rich woman pressing its, his feet, how does that word Narayana help a Christian? How does that word Narayana help a Muslim? How does that word Narayana help a Jew? How does that word Narayana help anybody who is not connected to this paraphernalia of Hindu ritualism? And if it is so that God in the name of Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba has asked us to study these Vedas, why would he ask us to study these Vedas if it is only applicable to one particular small sect of people called Hindus? Because he is Sarva Dharma God now. He is a multi, what we call as, he is the God who is beyond all this religions, no? He didn't come to establish any religion. Then why would God ask us to study Vedas if what I was saying is, how does Narayana help the Christian? The meaning of the word Narayana therefore implies beyond. In fact, I will tell you the very first suktam that we studied in Veda class back uh, 8 or 9 years ago, or even more than that, 11 years ago in San Jose. I was teaching this Narayana suktam. Bhagavan came in my dream and asked me this question. What does Narayana mean? And at that time, my level of awareness, you know, it's not improved that much, but uh, the level of awareness was so low, I told exactly that only. Blue guy sleeping on a snake coil with a rich woman pressing his feet. 
and he laughed and he slapped and he said what a fool you are dunna pota chi 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 no awareness then said swami what that is what narayana i know of what do you mean by you know then he said how does that narayana mantra help who you are teaching how does that make them better people you think i was to, to ask you to teach the vedas because you are proficient in veda chanting in fact i am vip very ignorant person ha huh? how does this help you he is asking how does this word help you out of his infinite compassion bhagwan gave a beautiful meaning of the word narayana which i have not written in any books or text ayana means a path ramayana means rama's path nara means a human ayana means a path narayana means human beings path what is the path on which a human being has to lead a journey this is the meaning of the word narayana now this is like da vinci codes that he is giving absolutely like incredible da vinci codes when he gave that insight in sight seeing insight when he gave that seeing insight and how that is incredible meaning that he is giving it was so eye opening and then i have to ask him so what is the path of a human being swami then he said that is what is described in narayana suktam ha huh? now why i am belaboring this all this preamble because you are all anxious to jump in and learn and uh, man i got to learn these mantras and uh, i want to chant and chant and by of course by chanting you get lot of mental satisfaction but we got to go beyond that a dhi ya adhyaya to go beyond that intellect even and to connect to that which is beyond the tools of perception if we reach to that point that is the reason why he is asking us to learn and chant vedas now when i say narayana means a human being's path you think it is anything related to hinduism every first of fundamentally a christian is a human being muslim is a human being everybody is a human being <coughs> now every human being to ask the question what is the path on which i need to tread is there anyone who doesn't want to know that is that question pertinent to one religion one sect and if this is what the sukta is describing then is that relevant to only a bunch of hindu people worshiping a blue guy sleeping on a snake coil with a rich woman pressing his feet on what is called a milk ocean is any of that stuff now how much this is much more supreme to that limited thing you have limited god to a name and a form and put him on a snake coil and worshiping him suddenly this narayana became somebody who is now intriguing and chanting and trolling and now suddenly we are saying oh my god i should know this so far i have been trodding on a path which i don't even know if i am on a path huh do we know we are on a path do we know we are on a spiritual path what is our path what is the destination what is the goal what is the target and how do i know that i am able to be on that path and be on the path that is destined for every human being to be on i'll pause there any questions children any questions comments now we are going to talk about highway fire okay called narayana when you look at this shanti mantra the shanti mantra here is a peace prayer 
And for each of these suktams, suktam means the one that is very well said. Ukti means to say, sukti means the one that is very well said, beautifully said. When somebody speaks something that is beautiful, you say that is sukti. Okay, sukta is sukti, same word. This first, very first uh, um, mantra is what is called as a team prayer. Sahana bhavatu. Let us all be together. Sahana bhunaktu. Let us all be nourished together. Sahaviryan karava bhai. Let us all work together in great vigor. Tejashvinavadhi tamastu. May our studies shine and illumine our intellects. Mavid vishavahai. May we not hate or contradict each other. When I told the prayer again, I will ask you this question. Is that prayer common to all human beings or not? Yeah? Is there any human being that would disagree this is something we should do or not do? Is it relevant to just Hindus? No. That is the meaning of the prayer. And there is no reference to anything. It's all like coming together, being nourished together, being working together in great vigor. Then going, taking that as a study to illumine our intellect and in the process of doing so, not hating or contradicting each other. Om Sahana Sangha. This is class. Okay. <laughs> I know you want to jump and chant, but many people chant this prayer improperly. It is not, it has to be chanted with the intonation, not the words. When you look at the intonation, Om Sahana Oh. 
together you chant. Oh. So don't put your own music in intonations, huh? Go with the text. Vishwam Narayanam Deva Maksharam Padhamam Padam Vishwam Narayanam Deva Maksharam Padhamam Padam Sarhasrasirusham devam sirsirusham devam Vishwaksham vishwasham bhuvam Vishwam narayanam devam aksharam padamam padam I think the it should be on the Ra, Sir Sha, right? Ra is the syllable where you have to say the higher note, not on the Sha. Sahasra Sir Sham Devam Vishwacham Vishwasham Bhuvam See, not on the Sha, on the Sir Sha. Ra Sha is together. Not Sha is not separate, okay? Sahasra Sirsham Devam Vishwaksham Vishwasham Bhuvam Sahasra Sirsham Devam Vishwaksham Vishwasham Bhuvam Sahasra Sirsham Devam Vishwaksham Vishwasham Bhuvam Vishwam Narayanam Deva Maksharam Paramam Padam Vishwam Narayanam Deva Maksharam Paramam Padam Vishwam Narayanam Deva Maksharam Paramam Padam Okay, one more time. So we talked about Narayana. We have to first understand who this, what this path is. How is this path is going to be? What is the description of this path? This path is Paramam Padam, the supreme abode. Paramam means the supreme, ultimate. Padam means destiny or abode. And this supreme abode or destiny is what? Sahasra Sirsham Devam. Sahasra Sirsham means millennia of heads. 
not one head, not thousand. Sahasra doesn't mean thousand. Sahasra means infinite number of heads. Devam. What is Devam? Who is God? Huh? We are all God. Uh, then why do we need to worship God? Until you realize you have to be God. Sahasra Sirsham, infinite number of heads, Devam, means the two words Deva, Devi. Deva means unmanifested divinity. Devi means manifested divinity. One is potential energy and the other is kinetic energy. The one that is present, Deva means the one who is present in infinite number of heads. You understand? So the one who is present in everything around you. Sahasra Sirsham Vishwa Aksham Aksham Aksha. Yes, you had a question? Yeah. So how do you relate Sahasa Shirsha Purusha Sahasa Shirsham Devam. So, how do you relate this? Both are same only. Purusha means the one who is present in everything. Deva also means the one who is present in everything. Same only. No difference. Sahasa Shirsha Purusha Sahasa Shirsham Devam. Same. Context in the inner meaning is the same. Vishwaksham. Vishwa means. Universe. Universe. Creation. Vishwam is creation. Creation and creator. What is this creation and the creator? Vishwam, Vishnuhu, Vashakkaro. This is the essence of the entire Vishnu Sasana. Vishwam, Vishnuhu. Entire essence of Sasana. We don't need to chant the rest of the stuff. Vishwam Vishnuhu Creator is all pervading in the Vishwa means the creation. The one who is all pervading in the creation Vishwaksham Aksha means also I Vishwaksham means the one who is seeing through the creation. What we are thinking God is in a picture God is in an idol God is in everything that we can relate to so that we can abuse him. Picture you can do whatever you want, idol you can do whatever you want. Then what happens? Suddenly God becomes alive. Then what happens? Suddenly the murti in front of you is alive and he is talking to you, he's seeing you. Then what happens? How do you treat that murti? You have to come on a Saturday morning for a Ekadash Rudra to experience that. God is not just sitting there. God is accepting, God is seeing, God is relating. Through what? Through everything that you are seeing, He is also seeing. Vishwaksham, who is seeing through you? Not your eye. Hello. If your eye is seeing, then supposing if you are blind, the eye is there, but is it seeing? Supposing you are deaf, the ear is there, is it hearing? And you are mute. The mouth is there, vocal cords are there, everything is there. But why are you mute? It's therefore not the organ that is doing the job. It is somebody who is behind it that is actually seeing. In fact, as a matter of fact, if I really go into the depth of physics behind it, how you are hearing, if you understand the phenomena, you will be amazed how you hear. You will be amazed how you see. You will be amazed how you speak. You will be astonished. It's nothing to do with what you are thinking, what is happening here. When I am speaking, what's happening? I am actually creating some impact on the, the, the waves around me. And that is getting somehow transmitted. That is actually coming through this thing. And in fact, what is inside? It's completely whole only. Nothing is there. Then suddenly this thing is just vibrating and receiving all the stuff. How is all that happening? Amazing, no? In fact, there is nothing called, oh my God, I am the guy that is hearing. In fact, all this is complete delusion of what is happening here. Nothing is, is created in a reality of what you are seeing, how you are perceiving. Go read about how you hear. Go read about how you see. 
it's astonishing something is happening some phenomenon is happening how all of this stuff is perceptually created around us <laughs> vishwaksham the one that is seeing through you the vishwa that is one way to interpret that or the one the eye of the universe that is actually looking at vishwaksham the eye of the creation he is the eye of the creation he is the head of the creation who deva who is deva the one who is present in everything yes somebody people are raising their hands left and right i don't know who raised their and you you raised your hand yeah no okay question am i talking anything that you can relate to so far i have said who narayana is <laughs> suddenly this mantra started suddenly how this narayana is he saying sahasra sirsham infinite number of heads the one who is present in this infinite number of heads but also the seer of the seeing the hearer of the hearing the perceptor the preceptor of the perception and how is that vishvasham bhuvam and by doing so he is giving happiness to the entire creation sham bhuvam sham bhu means the one who gives happiness Shambho means the one who is giving happiness. At what level? At physical level, his happiness is called sham. Happiness beyond the physical and perceptual level is called maya, mayo bhavecha, sham bhavecha, mayo bhavecha, shankara yacha, mayaskara yacha, shiva yacha, shivatara yacha. What is that meaning? not you are not referring to any god if there is something that is giving me happiness at physical level what is that happiness at physical level i am really thirsty and my my throat is getting parched and suddenly i get this water in an in a in a oasis in a desert and now i experience that water with the thirst then what happened ah oh, feels so good and that feeling of so good is called shambhu shambhuvam now even that only we are happy we are done with that after that you know we after the drinking that water the first sip then what happened the next sip chalta hai third sip no now what happened that what gave you happiness so temporarily after having two or three sips now i don't want it i'm done with it vishvasham bhuvam the one who is actually infinite number of present through the infinite number of heads seeing through the infinite number of heads and being happy in the infinite things around you basically the whole creation is actually entertained and enterprised by this thing that is present and that thing is what is vishwam narayanam devam akshanam paramam padam this creation is vishwam narayanam devam now you see deva ke liye what is your path vishwam is your path vishwam is your path now you are saying what is this vishwam is my path how can vishwam be my path how come creation be my path creation is your path because if you connect to the creation you connected to the creator what is the meaning of that word in bhagwan's words my life is my message expansion is my life what is your path expansion who is narayana expansion who is vishnu expansion vishwam vishnu hu vishnu means all pervading vishwam vishnu hu the all pervading one in the universe he is called vishnu adhan i have vishnu sitting right in front of me i want to make sure he understands what his name really means vishnu means the all pervading vishwam vishnu hu the one who is all pervading in the creation that is your path so what is your path if everything around you is the path what do you need to do with that uh, everything around you now hansar 
Understand? What is the most <coughs> supreme abode you have to reach? Love. Love all sattva. That's it. Who are you loving? Creation. Who are you serving? Creation. And who is creation? Creator. Class is over. Whole Vishnu, Vishnu Suttam is seen. In, in this Veda mantras, the very first mantras actually is executive summary. It gives everything you need to know. Now suddenly you say, oh, it is done. What? It's all, it's, it's all done. No, no, it's not done yet because how do you actually do that is described next. The executive summary, how you reach the executive summary and then at the end you also repeat the summary. This is corporate presentation style. Okay? This is how you present to the corporation. Where the mantras, suktas are corporate presentations to the supreme level. You cannot even be, if you understand Veda Mantras and Suktas, you can be the best communicator, the best corporate presenter, I can tell you. Stop going to all these uh, meaningless personal development courses with some X, Y and Z. Study the supreme scriptures that the, have been laid out in front of us. Then you will not only know how to communicate, how to see, how to talk, how to live and how to be present constantly with the one that is presenting through a power point. It's about power and point. You understand? The power is within us. The point is also within us. But we want to build consensus around us. We want to say, this fellow's opinion, survey monkeys. And everybody is a monkey and you survey all the monkeys. And what do these monkeys do? Monkeys tell you what? Only to jump from one place to another place. Now this monkey is listening to different monkeys and he wants to build a consensus around all the monkeys. You think monkeys will have consensus? Huh? Instead what you need to do, go inside and connect to the one that is connecting everybody. And now what happened? When you connect to that guy that is the common factor connecting everybody, when you connected to him, what did you do? You connected to everybody around you. Hello. Instead what are you doing? You want to connect this guy, that guy, LinkedIn, that fellow, this fellow, network, Facebook, this fellow. What do you think about? What do, you, what do I think about? This is all time waste, life waste. Don't do this kind of stuff. Instead go inside, talk to the guy you need to really talk to. Have a conversation with him. Please him, you shall please the whole creation in the entire universe because what did you do? Sahasra Sirisham Devam Vishwaksham Vishwashambhuvam Vishwam Narayanam Devam Aksharam Aksharam means decayless Aksharam Paramam Padam Supreme Abode connect to that which is present in Sahasra Sirisha is this to do with any blue guy sleeping on snake oil is this anything to do with that? No. What are we talking about? What is the path? What is the principle that we need to connect to? Now you check. Now you understood what this mantra meant? With what this mantra is meaning, now you chant. Sahasra Sirasham Devam Vishwasham Vishwasham Bhavam Vishwam Narayanam Devam Aksharam Paramam Padam oh. One more time. Sahasrasirasham Devam Vishwaksham Vishwasham Bhavam Vishwam Narayanam Devam Aksharam Paramam Padam Class is almost the first mantra itself is so powerful. And in this mantra, what we are really knowing is what is this path you need to actually embark upon. Vishwataha Paraman Nityam Vishwam Narayanagum Harim Vishwane Vayadam Purushaha Tad Vishwamupajivati. Now it's going into what is this principle that I am talking about? 
how do i further understand and now decipher delineate this principle of all pervading consciousness and that supreme abode what does this mean vishvataha means uh, this principle i am talking about is related to vishwa to the creation vishvata paraman nityam vishvata paraman nityam vishvata paraman nityam vishvanna ಪರಮಾನಿತ್ಯಂ ವಿಶ್ವ ನಾರಾಯಣಗುಂ ಹರಿಂ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಮಂತ್ರ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ವಿಶ್ವ ಪರಮಾನಿತ್ಯಂ ವಿಶ್ವ ನಾರಾಯಣಗುಂ ಹರಿಂ I said it one full word because it, it has to be set together but I have to split it purushaha tat vishvam upajiv so I will do like that vishvame vedam purusha vishvame vedam purusha vishvame vedam purusha tat vishvam upajivati tat vishvam ಜೀವತಿ 
to the Lord chant the whole mantra. Vishwata Paraman Nityam Vishwam Narayanagum Harim Vishwame Vedam Let's chant from the whole mantra from Sahana Vodhu. Vishwataha Paraman Nityam Vishwataha Paraman Nityam The supreme thing that we are talking about Paraman Nityam It is supreme and eternal It is not changing Nityam With respect to what? Vishwataha In relationship to the creation This principle that we are talking about Is always present That means what? It's always present with respect to that means when it is present the other thing is present. Just like when there is the object the reflection is always there. Right? What is present always when this is present? The creation is present only when the creator is present. They are both so intricately related that when this is present the other thing is present. Now then what happens? This other thing, this is the thing that is making the other thing evolve, resolve, dissolve. That is the next couplets are meaning of that. What is saying? Vishwatah Paraman Nityam Vishwam Narayanu Harim. Harim means dissolve. Hari means the one who dissolves. Hari. Hara means the one who dissolves. Rahim, the one who dissolves. In fact, the root word Rahim came from Hari. Rahim is dissolve. Hari, dissolve. Hara, dissolve. What is the difference, sir? Hari, Hara. What is the difference? I am <laughs> You are all tuned very much. When the I is dissolved, 
I is dissolved. Which I is dissolved? When your little I is dissolved, then what is present? The whole creator is present. You are present with the entire creation when your little I, the ego, is dissolved. When this ego principle, ego comes, he goes. Ego, he go. Ego, who is gone? Hari, H is gone. When ego comes, he goes. You have to put him in the frame. When that happens, Vishwata Paraman Nityam, Vishwam Narayanagum Harim. Narayana means the path of human being. What is the first principle of human being? Dissolve the ego. Harim. When you dissolve the I, the first principle in connecting to the supreme abode of eternity, Vishwata Paraman Nityam. That is one that a principle that is present eternally. The first path you have to take is on dissolving your ego, harim. Then what happens? When this ego is dissolved, Vishwame Vedam, then you will be able to know the Vishwa, the creation. When, when you dissolve the ego. Now, you understand? <coughs> See how beautiful this is. Suddenly, now you are saying, how do I understand this Narayana that is present, Narayana, the path of Narayana, how do I connect to that, that is present in everything? If you have to connect to that which is present in everything, you have to first let go of your ego. Then what happened? Suddenly, you will be able to understand Vishwame Vedam. The only thing you have to know is creation. Hello? You have to know the creation. How do you know the creation? To know the creation is what is called Veda. What does Veda Mantras do? Veda is all about worshipping the creation. And in worshipping the creation, you will be worshipping the creator. What is the creation? The creation starts with the first five principles of earth, water, fire, wind and the space. When you start worshipping those, then you are already worshipping the creator. Vishwami Vedam. Only thing you have to know is that God is present in everything around you. What is Veda? To know that God is present in everything and yourself too. Once you know that what happened? Vishwame Vedam Purushaha. This Purusha that we are talking about. He asked the question where is Purusha? He was no Purusha suddenly came. That guy who is present in everything, Vishwame Vedam Purushaha. Vishwame Vedam Purushaha means what? Creation. To know that creation is equal to Purusha, the creator. This is all you need to know. Vishwame Vedam Purusha. Veda means to know. To know what? Vishwame Purusha. Vedam. Know that Vishwame Purusha. Creator, creation are one and the same. Then what happened? Tad Vishwam Upajivati. The one who is making everything evolve. Resolve, dissolve. That principle you are now able to connect. So dissolve your ego first. Know that the creation and the creator and everything that is coming, evolving, resolving, dissolving is happening through one source of consciousness. Clear? Any questions? Any questions? Where is that ego coming from? Yeah, that's a very, very important question. Very, where is that ego coming from? Where is that ego coming from? Yeah, yes. Bad thoughts. The ego is coming basically from this thing of what is called doership. The ego is coming from, suddenly what happened? Where are the clouds coming from? From the? From the water, evaporation of the water. Who is evaporating water? Sun. Sun. But the same clouds that the he created is covering who? <laughs> is that fake? Yeah, see so Surya, that's the principle. The cloud that is generated by Surya is covering Surya himself. 
Now suddenly you are watching this guy and saying, Oh, he is now covered. Your action, when you keep on doing this action with this principle of what is called doership associated with your little self, then that actions that you are doing with this passion of I am doing, I am doing this, I am doing that, then what happened? Suddenly that covers your own supreme consciousness and suddenly now what happened? You forgot that there is supreme consciousness within you and now you have to discover because you have to cover yourself with something else called ego. It is actually that simple. When God is giving this energy and when He is doing things through you and things start happening with you, through you, to you, around you, then what you suddenly think is, oh my God, look, who is doing, who is speaking, who is doing all of this? Suddenly you are saying, oh no, 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 this little eye inside me is doing that. But suddenly you say, no, 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 it is not done by me, but it is done through me, done to me, done for me. And then what happened is, oh, I am not the Vishwas, what with Vishwam, the what we are talking about, Chakshuhu, who is seeing, who is speaking. When you connect to that aspect of it, that is where the ego is coming from. Okay, I think we have to stop here. It's 10 or 6, sorry, I'm already 5 minutes late. So, next class, we will go through the next mantra. And I'm sorry to the viewers today who experienced uh, this uh, technical uh, difficulties. We'll post the video on the on the website, on the Sayar Rudra website, okay? Sayaram, let's close with Om and Trishanti. Om Shanti.